Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another weekly installment of the Greys of Westminster live stream. I am the Nikon girl, Becky Danese, as you probably know if you've been with us before. For those of you who are newcomers, I know I've been speaking to a lot of people this week who um, didn't know the stream existed, and I've been pointing you in the direction of the stream. So hello to everyone who is joining us for the first time. Uh, please do subscribe and click the bell icon so you know when we're going live, so I don't have to remind Mind you. <laughs> um, today I am talking about something very exciting and I'm going to give you a bit of background on it in just a moment but before I forget if you would like to uh, give something back to the show let's say then you can contribute to the coffee fund using the dollar sign super chat thingy mabobba which is on this side I think. <laughs> um, hopefully I'm pointing in the right direction everything is backwards but I think it's up there. It's a dollar sign. If you press on it, you can contribute to our coffee fund. Um, simple as that. If you're not watching it live, you can contribute using the PayPal me link, which is below the video. So um, there are many ways for you to uh, give something back if you want to. All right. So hello to everyone who's made it just on time, made it early, is coming from all over the world, everywhere from Australia and Mexico and far reaches of England. Um, today I am talking about... <laughs> okay, so there was an announcement on Tuesday. I'm going to explain this announcement as in the best way possible. I have managed to borrow this for a few hours. Here it is. I want theme tune music. Ba, 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 <laughs> ba, ba. You know what that is? Let's, there we go. You see that? That's a Z5. I actually have one in my hands which is amazing. I have it for a few hours um, and then it's going straight back to Nikon. <laughs> but, uh, but I wanted to show it to you. I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to kind of explain a little bit um, about why this camera is what it is and the differences between this and some of the other bodies um, and how this kind of... Uh, let's say, fits into the Z lineup. So first of all, let me talk about the concept of the Z5. First of all, you can, you can see it. It's not that dissimilar in size to other things, except it's got that very, very cutie little 24 to 50 lens. Oh, flip it the right way around. That would help. There we go. It's got the very diddy kit lens on it, which I think on its own is actually a very interesting release. Uh, but first I'm going to talk about the camera. So the Z5, think of it, like the D600. Do you remember the D600, D610? Not, not the shutter problems, but just think about the camera itself. It was a entry point for so many people to move to full frame or to actually pick up DSLRs when they'd just been using film for so long. It was one of those kind of easy to use, uh, would one size fits all kind of cameras that didn't have ridiculously pro specs, but at the same time was more than enough in terms of image quality to make most people happy. So the Z5, I love how the class are just saying hi to each other. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> hello to everyone. And thank you for, for creating such a lovely sense of community. <laughs> um, so the Z5 is kind of that entry point for people who maybe haven't yet thought about going mirrorless. Um, I read a very interesting article by Tom Hogan, who I have to say, he tends to actually give everything, all of the information that he gives, he gives very, without emotion and without hyperbole and without, you know, getting over overexcited or over upset about things. And he gave a very good comparison on the Z5. The fact is that the vast majority of um, kind of camera buyers don't want to spend thousands and thousands of pounds. So although we were perhaps waiting for a Z8 or Z9, something that was going to be a flagship body, in order to get enough people into the Z system to make that camera worth worth the R&D expense and worth the research and the actual production, because obviously that's going to be an expensive camera to produce, um, they have to get more people to actually adopt Z cameras. So the Z5 kind of gives people an entry point. Now, um, uh, I'm just having a look at the, yeah, the pancake lens as well is very, very helpful. Um, and that kit option is very, very interesting. I'm going to talk about the lens in a little bit. But um, I would say that the uh, the camera itself, this, this is actually a sample body. I'm not going to show you pictures that I've taken from it. Um, but I just want to 
I wanted to show it to you in my hand so you could see the differences in the flesh. Um, and I would say that it's kind of, it's the camera that will let a lot of people start to go into the Z system. Let's put it that way. Right, so let's talk about the specs. John's asked, do I think it's the end of DSLR um, as the only one left is a high-end mirrorless camera? I don't think it's the, the total end of DSLR. There's an awful lot of, um, I mean, there's so many DSLR users that I don't think that Nikon could completely abandon DSLR, just like they didn't fully abandon film. I mean, they still produce the F6. So I think there is still definitely a market there. Obviously, last year they brought out, or actually, sorry, beginning of the year, <laughs> whatever whatever time of year it is now, um, they brought out the D6 and the 120 to 300. So they are still making DSLRs. Quite factually, the D3500 kit is the best-selling Nikon camera. It is an entry point camera, but of all of the cameras that they produce, the D3500 kit is the one that people go for because it's very accessible to people who have been maybe using their phones and then want something a little bit more serious. It's got a great sensor on it. Um, it will work with nearly the entirety of Nikon's lenses. Obviously, it doesn't autofocus with those older lenses, um, older AF lenses, but it's, it's pretty fantastic for a camera that's under 400 pounds, whatever the equivalent is in your currency. Um, the Z5 is not a comparison to the D3500 at all, but it's supposed to be the enticing camera to get people to move into Zs. A lot of the viewers here, I think, have Z cameras, not all, but a lot of them um, have some Z cameras, have a Z6 or a Z7 or even a Z50. Um, I'm gonna talk about how the Z5 fits into that lineup. So, first things first, this camera is actually five grams heavier than the Z6. I'm just gonna show it to you um, alongside the Z6 here. Don't do this to your cameras. Don't leave the sensors exposed. But, <laughs> so hopefully you can kind of see that it's, it's almost exactly the same, except the, the side grip, let me just shove my finger into the sensor. No, I'm joking, don't do that. Uh, side grip is slightly bigger. This is the Z5. This is the Z6, so the side grip is slightly bigger, um, and also it's fractionally heavier. It's five grams heavier for what difference that makes. Um, you'll notice from the top, if I show you that actually, let me just, I'm just gonna flip the screen so that I can see what you can see. There we go. <laughs> Hold it the right way around, that'd be good. Okay, see the top there? So this is the Z6, that's the Z, five so the z6 has got that top lcd and it's got a lockable mode dial oh thank you andre thank you for contributing to the coffee fund and here is the z5 that doesn't have a lockable mode button so you can see from those that there is a slight difference in um in the actual what's the word form factor i suppose i found just from the little bit that i used the z5 i actually really liked the grip, <laughs> not yet, soon. <laughs> um, so I put it, the grip on the Z5 is ever so slightly deeper, let's say. I don't know if deeper is the right word. I think it is deeper. Um, but apart from that, there's not really much difference in terms of the layout. Here's the back. Let me just see if everyone, anyone's asking any questions, not yet. Long live DSLRs, okay, fine. Oh, thank you, Renee. Thank you for your contribution um, to the coffee fund. Now I've got to compete with Marilyn for <laughs> my space on the back screen. So you see the back there is basically the same. I mean, I'm not going to hold that right up to the camera. The reason that the Z5, this is Z6, <laughs> the reason that the Z5 is ever so slightly bigger on that grip side is actually because of the dual SD card slot. There's two SD card slots in here instead of the Z6, which has a single XQD, and the Z7, which has a single XQD. Why did they do that? Okay, so the XQD cards are obviously very, very fast. Um, if you're shooting 4K video, or if you're gonna shoot at 10 or 12 frames per second, then you're gonna want a very, very fast memory card. The Z5 shoots lower res, it shoots 4K, but at a crop factor. Um, it also doesn't shoot 10 or 12 frames per second. It shoots four and a half frames per second. So um, SD cards are usually fast enough to cope with things like that. Um, some people were complaining that they wanted a second card slot in their Z6 or Z7. Well, if you're not planning to do, um, you know, full full form 
4K or oversampled 4K um, and you don't need 12 frames per second and you want the dual card slot, then um, SD cards are the way to go in the Z5. Now, um, before I forget my notes, because this is important, there, are, there is a difference in the sensor between these two. So the Z5 has what they call a standard front side illuminated FSI, front side illuminated sensor. It's 24.3 megapixels, whereas the Z6 here is backside illuminated, BSI. I'm going to explain what that means in a minute. Uh, backside illuminated 24.5 megapixels um, on the sensor. So it is actually a slightly different sensor. Now, what does BSI mean? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a really good question? Um, it essentially means if you, I've, I've actually got a diagram, but I don't think I can show it to you with, without it looking very confusing. So sensors come in layers. You've got like a micro lens layer. You've got your colored pixel layer, which is uh, red, green, blue, not in that order. Um, and then normally you have circuitry and then you have your photodiode layer with Backside illuminated sensors, they switch that round so that the circuitry is right at the bottom, the wiring is at the bottom, so that the photodiodes are in front of the circuits, which means that essentially you get better low light performance, more light absorption. So the Z6 is BSI, the D850 is BSI, the Z7 is BSI. Um, we're seeing more and more of these backside illuminated sensors. Essentially, not all cameras have them because they were originally very, very expensive and not very economical to make, not very cost effective. These days, we're starting to see more and more cameras with this backside illuminated sensor. The Z5 has a standard frontside illuminated sensor. So what does that mean effectively? It just means that in poor lighting conditions, the Z5 might not be as high a performer as the Z6. Um, now, I will, um, <laughs> I use a cardboard box with a pinhole in it. Brilliant. I want to do a stream on pinhole photography. <laughs> Make a note of that for, for the future. Um, Andy's talking about, yep, two SD cards, not XQD or CF Express. Completely different card, but SD cards are super easy to get hold of, which is very, very handy. Um, the image stabilization is the same in both cameras. So, you know, uh, was it two weeks ago? I think I was talking about the Z cameras and I was talking about the difference between uh, body stabilization and lens stabilization and how those work together. Um, essentially, if you've got a lens with VR and a body with VR, then you're going to end up with a five axis VR system. Um, so it's going to go front, back, left, right, and it's going to have, it's going to have all of the different orientations. Um, if you have a lens that doesn't have VR, then you have three axis um, image stabilization. Essentially the Z6 and the Z5 are the same in that respect. So you don't lose any image stabilization. I was actually surprised about that when they did the announcement, I thought that was going to be the thing they would cut out of the Z5 to really differentiate between the Z5 and the Z6, but they, they put it in. So, um, so that's quite good, particularly if you want to use your old manual lenses or your non-VR lenses and you want the benefit of vibration reduction. Um, because I have a sample body, I wasn't allowed to take pictures and show them to you. I did take some pictures and I literally, I've only had it since about 11.30 this morning, so I haven't had much time to actually look um, and do a real play with it, but I did do some low light comparisons because I'm one of those nerdy people that likes to just push it all the way up to the highest ISO and see what happens. Um, <laughs> so from my very, very brief experiments, uh, at the top ISO, so it's the same ISO range, 100 to 5,000, sorry, 51,200 ISO, same ISO range between the Z5 and the Z6. I would say that you start to see the difference above 6,400 between the Z5 and the Z6. I'm not going to compare the Z7 because it's more megapixels, it has a completely different way of handling low light. Um, but the Z5 and the Z6 are compared quite frequently. So it makes sense to, to do those two side by side. So if you're shooting, so real life kind of scenarios, you're not going to be shooting at 12,800 ISO. You're probably going to be shooting at top 6,400, maybe 8,000 at a push. Um, at 8,000 ISO, the Z6 might perform slightly better. I think that has a lot to do with the backside illuminated sensor. But still, the noise wasn't horrendous. It wasn't bad at all. Um, so that was just looking on the back screen. I didn't get a chance to really give 
give um, it a full, I didn't look at raw files or anything like that, not allowed to do that, no, no, no. But if you do want to see some sample images from this sample Z5 body, this specific body here, um, Richie Scherer from Necon School on his YouTube channel, he did do, I think it's about a 20, 20 or 30 minute video and he did put some sample images in there, I guess because he's from Nikon, he's allowed to do that. <laughs> They were from the sample body, but they were very impressive. I was I was quite surprised. Um, so thank you to Trevor. I didn't get my little alert. Did it come up? Thank you, Trevor, for your contribution to the coffee fund. Did I miss anyone else? Um, no, good. Okay, because <laughs> I wasn't. I don't have the alerts on, so I didn't hear it. Um, Andy says five axis does work, but the lens takes control of the VR system, not the camera. That's exactly what I said last week, Andy. Exactly. Someone's paying attention. So when you switch the VR on your lens, then it switch it takes control of the body VR essentially. But that's not a problem. It doesn't make any difference. Um, Martin, yes, you would need the FTZ adapter. It comes in a kit form, the Z5. In the US, they're doing body only. In the UK, they're doing just body with the 24 to 50 or body 24 to 50 and FTZ adapter. So if you want to use your standard Nikon F mount lenses, you do have to get the adapter. Simple as that. Um, the adapter works really well. Obviously, with those older autofocus lenses, I've discussed this many times before. But with the original AF lenses, uh, you do lose autofocus, basically. <laughs> You all know that already. I'm sure I've I've talked about that loads and loads. Um, I'm going to bring on my guest speaker. <laughs> Do you want to come and join me? Let's just widen the camera view. <laughs> so there you go. Oh, hello, Internet. <laughs> there we go. Look, I've got oh, the alert now. Thank you, Marco, for your contribution to the coffee fund. I like how I covered my face very strategically. <laughs> that was on purpose. <laughs> So, um, Did I miss anything? You missed all of it. I talked about all the good stuff. Make it go away. This is Constantine, everybody. Yay, give him a round of applause. I'm the blog that's on the video with the big That's Becky, right. Basically. He's yeah. also known as the guy that is on the videos with me sometimes. Um, thank you, Ian. I think what's going to happen is every time someone contributes, you're just going to get covered with my... <laughs> it's exciting. <laughs> I should have sat on that. They don't so. let me out very often. No, so, yeah. no, we don't. <laughs> we keep him strapped to his desk at most times. It's safer that way. So Z5, you are at the little NDA. That's the Z50. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is the Z5. So who do you think this camera is for? Okay, well, I... Oh, it's... it's it, <laughs> my face is yay, covered Nick. again. Yeah. <laughs> keep <laughs> donating, please. You know. Just continue keep to donate. Keep off the internet. We'll, we'll never see Constantine's face at this rate. <laughs> I'm not going to speak right now. I'm just going to wait. That's till amazing. This is Thank you, Ian, for your contribution to the coffee fund. That's incredible. Um, I wonder if I can move it. No, I'll keep it there. Do you want me to keep it right there? I'm going to. Oh, no, I moved us. Don't do that. <laughs> oh, now I've moved the whole thing. This is the problem with trying to do things while you're live. Let me put it at the front. Where is it? Where's it gone? It's gone now. I've moved it. Yeah, now we can I see your face. You did. Um, you broke it. Who this camera is for? Yes. Um, I agree with you and Tom Hogan. Yes, I think that was a very good article of his. This is your G600, effectively. Yeah. So this is not a flashy new car. It's your Ford Focus or Honda <laughs> Civic or yeah. something like that. So it's effectively, it will introduce a lot of people to full frame. So, and people, let's say G600 was the best selling full frame camera when it was out and then yeah. G750 kind of took a place of it. Yeah, but there was quite a big price difference, wasn't Absolutely. there? Because when the 750 came out, it was, I remember, because I bought it at full price when it first it came out. About 1800 pounds? It was, it was about yeah. 1899, something like that. And um, the Z, uh, the sorry, the D600 was? About 1300 and then it went down yeah. to about under a thousand pounds. Right, and then, I mean, apart from, okay, so they had some oil, dust whatever issues but and then they called it a d610 and handled all those but um but it was still a very very popular camera and um, baxter's asked uh thank you terry for your contribution to the coffee fund <laughs> um baxter's asked are they not planning to sell body only so in the uk at the moment we don't have any body only um product codes or pricing we've just got the 24 to 50 kit and the ftz kit i did query it i wonder if they will do that because in the us they're doing a body only option um so it's it's quite possible yeah, that they will happen. do it absolutely um but i i think 
if you are not yet, let's say you haven't quite worked out whether or not you want to go mirrorless and you don't want to front for a Z6, you're not, you don't need ProRes raw video or um, 12 frames per second. I mean, I shot a little bit. I, I think I'm allowed to do this because I'm not showing pictures. Um, let me put it into continuous high. God, that fan is so noisy. Right. Let's see. Can you hear that? Put that right by the mic. So that's four and a half frames per second. Um, and then it ran out of battery. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't let me forget about the battery. That's important. Um, so then this, let's just extend that out. So this is, it's different on every camera. This is high speed extended on the Z6. Delicious. I just took a thousand photos. No, I took 66 photos. That was impressive. Um, obviously the buffer is, is we can't really compare the buffer, but it's supposed to be 100 shots in the Z5 and for 40 something, 43. 43 at 12 frames per second. Right. And it's four and a half Z6. at, well, frames per second, 100 shots. Right. Effectively. So you can basically go for longer with the Z5, but you just won't have those, you won't have that insane um, high speed uh, level. It's it's the back Marilyn, Marilyn campaign. That's right. It's going to come up every time. I love it. Yeah, if you want to cover Constantine's face with a picture of Marilyn please Monroe, contribute to the do. coffee band. <laughs> um, and then I'll have her as my guest instead of guest of honor um, with a slightly deeper voice. Yeah. <laughs> there she is again. Thank you, Gary, for your contribution. So, okay, so we know we know about the frames per second. The battery in the Z5, I think this one, we didn't actually get an ENEL 15C with this sample. We had to supply our own battery, but you can charge while shooting, which is very useful for video. It's very, very useful for, um, what else is it useful for? Just shooting and charging at the same time. I suppose. This, this is the interesting one because we got um, we can charge while we're shooting, but then we have 1.7 crop. Yes. <laughs> it seems a bit weird one, and yeah. we can't quite figure it out yet, but no. I'm sure there's a reason for, for this. Obviously, you can charge the battery in camera via the USB cable, as you would do with Z6 and Z7 as well. Yes, and you could also charge it using like a power bank or something, which yes. you couldn't... I, don't, I am not sure if you could do with the Z6. It had a very specific AC adapter configuration. Yeah, EH7P, uh, which you would only get with Z7. That's right, in the kit. And not Z6. Exactly. Um, and so you'd have to buy it for the Z6. Um, although, I think, could you charge it using the USB cable that came in the box? No, we tried. Okay. We tried even to use a MacBook charger, which is USB-C as well. Oh, that yeah. didn't work. So, oh, yeah. unfortunately, at this moment, it's EH7P, which you either have to get separately or you got it already. Yeah. Um, another note on the C battery is its larger capacity. I think it's 22 mAh instead of 1860 mAh. Right. So, oh, thank you to David <laughs> for your contribution to the coffee fund. <laughs> he said, bring back the ice cream cup. I suppose that would be less invasive. <laughs> Then, then constantly we just have a cup of ice cream. Um, so you can use the newer batteries with the Z6 and the Z7, but the Z5 is the only one that you can shoot while charging because yeah. it's down to the camera, not the battery in that case. But the ENEL 15C is higher capacity. So if you've got a Z6 or Z7 already and you want a higher capacity battery, then obviously you could get the 15C. That would that would do the job for you. I actually found the reason why would you do that. So with the new webcam software that they announced, mm -hmm. you can stream on YouTube or Twitch and charge the battery effectively at the same, at the same time. time. That makes so much sense now. Okay. So five so, hour streams from now on. Yes, so I will be doing <laughs> streaming marathons. Um, no, that's a good point though. That's a nice little segue into the firmware update. So they also, so here's the little Z50. I wanted to show you just, so let me flip over so I can see what you can see. Um, so I wanted to just show you the two side by side. Ugh, let's angle that so that you can kind of see them. Problem is it's now gonna focus on your face. <laughs> This is the face recognition for you. It's too good. So uh, which one's in which hand? That's the Z50. That's the Z5. The only reason I can tell is because it's slightly heavier. Um, but when you look at them side by side, there's actually not as much of a difference as, um, as I thought there would be because the compact lens is yeah. so tiny. The lens is the thing that makes all the difference there because the Z50 on its own doesn't really weigh anything. I've raved a little bit about this camera. You can put it in your 
big pocket. <laughs> if you've got a big pocket, you can put it in there. Um, but they did, so they announced a couple of pieces of, um, well, they announced a firmware update for the Z50, um, the, the Z6 and Z7. There you go. Um, where you can basically use the, the animal face detection. Yeah, you have to look at that video on YouTube. You have to look at the trailer. It's full of cute furry animals. <laughs> It's great, honestly. It's probably my favorite Nikon trailer of all time. You can please do more of these videos. That's yeah. right. And then um, with the, what else did they do? The software, the streaming software. Yes. Right, so I'm gonna talk about that because I'm an expert on the subject of streaming. <laughs> <laughs> so as you will know, I, I, in order to start this live streaming adventure that we did. I was originally using a webcam at home with a green screen. I was stealing a lot of my husband's streaming gear and he kept asking me why can you not just use your camera to live stream? Like it doesn't make sense. Um, it was mainly because my computer was old but also I needed a capture card which is what we're using now to take the footage from the Z6. It goes through a capture card and then it goes into our laptop. It's a very finickety thing. However, there is some beta software that's just come out. Canon released some a couple of months ago and Fuji did as well. Fuji yeah. and I jumped up and down a bit and said, Where's the Nikon one? And then they and then it was like, Oh, here it is. So now if you've got a compatible camera, you can use, for example, Z6, Z7, Z50, Z5, G50, G50. G5, G6, G500, D780. Yep. And I think the D5600. Yes, so all the latest basically. Yeah, right? the, yep. the newer cameras, um, you can basically use those to live stream. So all you need to do is have a fast connection between your computer HDMI, between your computer and your compatible camera. And then you need the beta software. I am sure, uh, Windows 10, first of all, operating system only for now. That's the same with the Canon and the Fuji software. There, there are some limitations and I don't think it will give you that full 1080p um, uh, streaming rate because certainly the Canon software doesn't. It's like 720p or something. Yeah. To be honest, that's more than enough. What we're using right now is 720p because if we used anything more then you'd probably get drop frames, you'd get a bit Stutter. of buffering. Um, remember what happened with the D6 uh, stream, if you were I there? Love that was my favorite stream. I think it lasted five minutes Thank you, before my computer died. <laughs> so that's what happens when you try and live stream in 1080p and invite a guest speaker on over a remote connection and try and shove Skype in there as well. It was it was horrendous. So um, so this will just eliminate some of some of the problems that we've had with streaming and definitely it's out in August. So definitely when it comes out we will download and install it and Yeah, shall we try a stream with it? We might even point? try a stream with it and see what happens. Capture card goes <laughs> on eBay. If I'm feeling brave. No, I have other uses for the capture card. We can, might be able to we, see, this is the thing. We've got a capture card now, so we might be able to then plug in a remote monitor using the capture card and make Whoa. it all fancy. We've got plans. The possibilities so are endless. So many plans. Um, okay, so I've talked. We've talked about the body. The twenty-four to fifty. We've only, as I said, we've only had it since about eleven thirty this morning. Um, it takes a fifty-two mil filter for anyone that is interested in that. It's very small and light. It weighs one hundred and ninety-five grams versus, for example, the kit lens with the Z6, Z7, this weighs 500 grams. So the lens itself has a lot of weight in it. If you want a small, it's an F4 to 6.3. So if you do want a small light lens just for those kind of street photography, bit of travel, maybe a bit of portraiture, stuff like that. It also focuses quite closely. It's about a foot. Um, and close. yeah, I wow. was playing with it and I was quite impressed that it was focusing that that um, close. Uh, Shin, so in terms of low light performance, I did mention very briefly earlier, um, but you might have missed that little bit. So 6,400 is, is comparable between the two. And then beyond that, just with the sample body, because we don't have a final production model yet, but just with the sample body that I looked at, on the back screen, because I didn't get a chance to look on a big screen, above that, the Z6 seemed to perform slightly better. Uh, okay, there's loads of comments coming in, so let me try and read them now. Um, so battery charge is useful when you forget the charger, like I did when I traveled to Budapest. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so having the remote, the USB charger is, is much more useful. Um, I have no idea what's going on with the comments about Constantine. This is what happens when you come on camera. <laughs> 
<laughs> it goes mad. Uh, managed to charge my Z6 using my MacBook Pro charger and Apple USB-C cable. Oh, wasn't that lucky? We tried it here. We tried it here. Yeah. We didn't have any luck, but that's good to know, Johan. Thank you. Um, shoots 4K. Yes, it does shoot 4K, but with a crop factor. 1.7 crop. Uh, quite a hefty crop factor. And it doesn't shoot at that oversampled 120p, 120 frames. It's 60, uh, which is still fine but if you are seriously looking at video work then the z6 makes much more sense uh ftz software update why is this needed new lenses yes and teleconverters so segue into teleconverters so at the same time as the z5 announcement there were two teleconverters 1.4 and two times converter um at the moment, they are only listed as compatible with the 70 to 200 2.8, which um, I almost don't want to mention because it's not here yet. But the idea is that the teleconverters will come out at the same time as the lens, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> at some point this year. Um, so the so the firmware update is for those. I did have a look at the MTF charts for anyone that's interested. Those are online. The teleconverter performance looks phenomenal. Um, effectively you shouldn't notice the difference when using the converter or without so that's on paper I don't have one yet to to look at but uh, but there you go let's see if we can answer any other questions like the one sitting next to you hmm you got an admirer <laughs> maybe I misunderstood that but there we go uh, the FTZ yes how's low light performance answered that one dual card slots yeah, but so you've got dual SD card slots. Yeah. SD cards don't write faster at the moment than 280 meg per second. Whereas XQD cards, the fastest write speed is 400 meg per second. Yeah. In fact, CF Express is even more. Yeah. So I think it is uh, one terabyte speed or something like that. It's, no. it's a lot. One terabyte capacity. Um, well, technically, XQD card uh, failure rate is a lot uh, smaller So mm. compared to SD cards. So if you ask Nikon, they'll say, well, XQD cards and CF Express cards are better than SDs. But as photographers, of course, we all like dual slots. So I, I like this feature in this new camera. Yes. And in fact, if I just show you, have I got an XQD card in here? Yeah. And there's an SD card in here. So just if you have a look at that card versus an SD card, that is a much more robust thing. Um, the only weak point I would say is this tiny little point up here. If you squish them, then sometimes they bend. But to be honest, the contacts are completely exposed on the SD cards, whereas they're nice and protected on XQD. So generally, the um, XQD cards are more robust. They're kind of, you know, people think professionals will use XQD. Can you check if it has a DX crop mode on it? While you're... It does. It does. It does. Well, you checked yes. that already, because I didn't look. So uh, so who asked me that question? So you've got choosing and um, you've got FX and DX. There you go. Can't really see it because our, because of face... Face detection, there you go. <laughs> so FX and DX mode, um, and nothing else, no other crop factors. No, and then you got 1.7 in video. Yes, okay, that's interesting. Um, so Z5 has no high resolution slow mode options. Yes, we talked about Correct. that, that's right. So it's 60p, that's the, that's the fastest slow mo mode you'll get. Uh, need the camera off to charge with USB on the Z6. That's right, Peter. So for Z6, Z7, you need to have the camera off to charge. Um, for the Z5, uh, you can charge it while the camera's on and you can use it. It's not really entry level. It's true, Kenneth, that's very, very true. It's been pegged as a kind of entry level yeah. FXZ. But as we said, I think for someone who's not doing sports and not needing, I mean, to be honest, like for me, for example, I never use Ten, I mean, I've got what? How many frames per second on my D850? Seven? <laughs> Six and a half? Yeah. I never use it. Never, ever. Um, I think I've used it twice in all the time that I've had it. And um, so four and a half is going to be more than yeah. adequate. For if you're not a sports and wildlife photographer, you don't really need a high frame rate. And four and a half is adequate enough. Yes. I personally thought that this release will be more like Z50 with a full frame sensor. But they actually put more. So they put uh, yeah. vibration reduction on the sensor. A lot of features are coming from Z6 camera as well. Um, so it's, as I say, they, they put actually more uh, into it than we expected. So yeah, I, surprised by that. I was surprised. I'm going to talk a little bit about the more intricate differences. Um, for example, the Z5 doesn't shoot TIFF files. Oh, no. Um, which, <laughs> which, once again, I have 
never shot with TIFF. Uh, have you ever used TIFF files in camera? Mm, no. No? I think that RAW is enough for most people. Maybe for someone it would be a deal breaker, but if so, then just front for a Z6. Um, what else can I say? So, exposure bracketing. We've got um, under and over bracketing stops, five stops on the Z6 and only three on the Z5. So if you do heavy duty HDR, um, but this is auto bracketing, right? Because you can yeah. obviously manually bracket and then just, you, you know, bracket up to five stops if you really wanted to. Um, there's there's a, a low light autofocus, minus four EV on Z6 and minus three EV on Z5. Right. So in low light, Z6 will be slightly better. Yes, that makes sense. Um, what else have we got? We've got no top LCD, as I discussed on the Z5. Um, I talked about the lock. That's a Z50, isn't it? Actually, they are surprisingly similar. Like, the positioning is similar, so I keep confusing them. But, yeah, so on the top of your Z6, you've got that mode lock button. You don't have that on the Z5, but it's also in a slightly less... Uh, vulnerable spot because it's on this side where the LCD is so whereas with this one you're more likely to knock it because it's on the corner there um, does it have focus stacking I don't know have a look does it have focus stacking let's have a look um, let's just see I'm just looking at the the specs while we go along because because we haven't had it for more than a couple of hours and we haven't had to explore all the details this is why you get to ask us the questions and we get to find out um, yeah, we've got focus shift shooting in here, so it's all in there. Yeah, oh, good, excellent. Okay, does it have the negative digitizing mode? <sighs> Probably That's not. a good question. <laughs> it's my favorite feature. <laughs> We're going to do the whole video about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I've got pictures. Ah, that's a good point, actually. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some sample images from the Z. Five and the twenty-four to fifteen. <laughs> forgot its name. Is that what it's called? <laughs> That's what okay. it's called. I had to check. Let me. Uh, and I have volume while doing it too. Look at that. So these are just Nikon's sample images because again, I was not allowed to take pictures and show them to you. But I did want to show you some of the shots. I don't have the full specs, so um, I, I can't tell you exactly what was done. But as far as I know, these were all taken with the Z5 and the twenty-four to fifty. In fact, it does actually say in the description there twenty-four to fifty. Uh, also the 24 to 50 on that one, that's landscape. This is low light shot. Now I particularly like these street shots. It's, uh, it's very, very, you can't hear it. Can't oh, you can't see it. Oh, is there not a light? You should be able to see it because it's screen grab. <laughs> Had a minor panic moment there. Um, so Z5 24 to 50 in low light. This shot, I think you can download some of these shots from the Nikon website to um, to have a look at the full res files. Um, but the low light performance is very good, despite the fact that they're shooting in some cases at like 6,400 ISO. That one, I mean, hard to tell on the screen, but it looks a little bit noisy. Don't know what ISO they were shooting at on that one. Uh, it's pigeon. <laughs> we have to have a shot with a pigeon every time. In fact, that was that was the first thing I took a picture of when I got the Z5 in my hands. And then we've got the filters. The, Look at that. The, it looks like an Instagram filter. They've got them built in to the camera. Um, this one, I think, is the one called Denim, if I'm not mistaken. That's the same on the Z6 and Z7. This one, I, I couldn't understand this shot. I mean, it's I like it, but I didn't understand it. How, how did that happen? It's like... It blows my mind. May, yeah, maybe there's... Anyway. And there's a doge. <laughs> so also 24 to 50 uh, with that one. All of these shots were actually taken with that kit lens. Um, and there's a portrait. I think this isn't using... It doesn't have a fully articulated screen, does it? It doesn't have selfie mode. Does it go all the way down mm, and upside down? No. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, so maybe someone just got really close. That looks like a selfie, doesn't it? It could be on a stick, isn't it? it could, I don't know how. Anyway, so there you go. Those are some sample images. As I say, you can, if you want to, if you go onto the, I didn't want to see that, sorry. <laughs> if you go onto the Nikon website, you can probably download those high res files. We do also have higher resolution versions. So if there's any picture that you want to see um, blown up or you want to have a look at it large, usually Nikon allow you to download the high res um, straight out of the camera files. Yeah. They don't edit any of their sample images, so they are just taken straight out of the camera. Uh, so there's some pictures for you. Okay, so I'm just going to... No flippy screen. 
Yeah, so we were just having a little experiment while we were looking at that. So the screen flips to the same extent yep, as the Z6. So whereas the Z50 gives you the selfie mode, very important, I take loads of selfies all the time, um, the Z5 doesn't, so not aimed for selfies <laughs> or selfie takers. It has focus stacking. Um, the picture control menu is essentially the same. same. I didn't see any differences with the picture controls. Um, in fact, I was trying to read all of the different picture controls because obviously it's got those built-in filters um, on the Z6 as well as the Z5. And it actually has, yeah, exactly the same. I don't think they can see that. Uh, sorry, I keep going back to the same thing. Oh, yeah. It's because okay. of the, it's because also face, face recognition. It just wants to see my eyes. So you got literally the same modes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your eyes you and then it will refocus. There you go. For a, for a few seconds there, you got that. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's get rid of that one so I don't have to keep flipping to the right screen. There we go. Uh, so one question, is the Z5 compatible with the WRR10 and the uh, AWL flash system or is it CLS only? Okay, so I asked that question when they did the, the little briefing for us of the Z5 a few days ago. I was like, what about that? I assume that it's going to be compatible with the with the yeah. wireless lighting system because it has the right port for it in the side. So it's uh, it's literally the same port as would be on D600 and D750. That's right. So I don't see any reason why it wouldn't work with that. It doesn't have a built-in flash, so there's no other way to get it to work with the creating, creative lighting system. And what I found is that all of the recent cameras like the D500, D5, D780, D850, any of those that don't have built-in flashes, as well as the Z cameras, um, are AWL compatible, as opposed to CLS compatible, yes. Creative Lighting System. Yep. Um, so we're guessing that it's the same with that. I haven't actually found it in writing, but that is the um, assumption. So, interesting enough, Peter says, <laughs> Peter says the only card failure he's had in the last 13 years was on, I'm guessing, XQD uh, on a hot day. The only failure I've had is on compact flashcards. So, I mean, it's unfortunate that it was on a hot day. Maybe it, maybe they melted, I don't know. Um, flippy screen for selfies should be standard. <laughs> you know what, why not? I mean, I think that this camera isn't aimed for that. I actually have a Z50 vlogger kit, which yes. I'm gonna do an unboxing and a little setup video of. We're gonna vlog ourselves. I'm gonna vlog, isn't it pronounced vlog? I, I think know. it is. I'm not on YouTube. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm going to unbox that. That actually has a whole setup for if you want to do that kind of thing. And that's where the, the actual the flip out screen is really handy in those situations because you can actually see what you're filming. So I will do that one of these days. The Z6, I would say, a, sorry, Z5, beg your pardon, very much like the, um, let's say the not not necessarily the DF, but those cameras that were designed more for photographers than videographers, yeah. it's more geared towards that line of that line of photographer, let's say. Yeah. Um, did you check if it has the digital negative? I don't think it has, but you have to do it in the um, in the i menu during live view. Uh, no. No. Doesn't look like it does. That's very sad. <laughs> but you know what? I am gonna do a live stream or a video um, and actually show you how to convert your negatives if you don't have the negative digitizing uh, functionality. Please ask us questions about the Z5 while you're here. It's very, very rare that I get to have Constantine on camera with me <laughs> these days. He's gone into yeah. retirement early. Yes. So, um, so please do take advantage and ask questions while I'm trying to find these things. Uh, no, I think you're right. I don't know where I else. I think it it's in much of a firmware update. It's still a pre-production camera, so they may introduce it. It's so true. You never know. It's very true. Yeah, but there's no option. Did the but the Z6 and the Z7? Do they have it? I can't remember. Actually, I don't think they do. Uh, only the D850 and the Z50. Is uh, it Yeah. D8 D780. That's the one. It's coffee time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're going to do a video on that. And yes. I think the easiest way to do it is via Lightroom or Photoshop, but also yes. we can show you how to do it in the Nikon software. Yeah, exactly. It's not that hard. And once you've done it once, you can basically copy the settings that you have to use to convert your negative to positive. You can copy them and then just paste them for a whole batch of files if you're using Lightroom, for example. Um, how much is the Z5 kit? Okay, so here is, that is a good question. 
that's that's not the latest price list. So the body with the twin lens kit, I think, is one eight one nine. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. We're not in sales, we okay? <laughs> <laughs> we're, both, we're both too technical to think about the pricing of things. We think um, about photography, not the pricing. We think about yeah. the art of it. So it's about £1,800. Um, I believe in the US, the Z5... What's the, what's the Z5 kit in the US? I think it's pretty much the same conversion, but one-to-one, -one, effectively. So, yeah, so uh, if it's £1,800, it would be $1,800. Yeah, I think it was $1,700, it was twenty-four to fifty, and then $1,800 with FTZ. And here we have the same in pounds. Unfortunately, we have VAT included in the prices here. There's no VAT in the United States. It's added on top of that. Yes. But obviously, it's not a straight conversion, unfortunately. No. So, um, And also, obviously, in the US, they're very much advertising the fact that they're selling it as a body only for $1,399, which can confuses everyone in the UK. Yeah. I certainly was slightly confused and outraged uh, when I first read the price. I was thinking, why is it so much cheaper? But that was the body only price and we don't have that in the UK. Uh, Randall was late. Randall, I'm gonna have to do some revision. <laughs> okay, um, good question, Shin, about the EVF performance. So, the, so from what we've seen, and it seems to vary because we've had everybody have a little look through the viewfinder. I found the viewfinder slightly laggy, but this is a sample body. Um, on paper, it's supposed to be the same. Yeah. However, the back screen is lower resolution on the Z5 than the Z6. It's 1.1 million dots versus like 2.1 million dots. Uh, approximately. Yeah. I mean, when you're comparing it side by side with Z6, it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look like a low res screen at no. all. So it's actually pretty good and yeah, it doesn't look pixelated or anything like that. The biggest difference was when I was doing, obviously I did those high resolution, sorry, high ISO comparisons and I zoomed into 100% on both cameras and I kind of had to find the happy medium between both before the, the actual resolution of the back screen let the Z5 down. Um, but you were talking over 100% blow up before before it really became a problem. Uh, Nick asks when it's due to be on sale. It's supposed to be end of the summer. So we're looking at end of August, about a month's time. We have a waiting list. Um, so if you do want one or you want us to let you know when they start to come into stock, you just have to let us know. You can drop me an email um, and I will add you to the waiting list and obviously keep you informed on stock situations. Um, there's so just to um jacob just to clarify so it's going to be z5 with 24 to 50 that's kit number one and the second option is z5 24 to 50 ftz that's kit number two those are the only kit options we have at the moment i'm sure that if we can uh let's say communicate that there's a demand for it then we might be able to get z5 with ftz or z5 body only um but we would have to basically let Nikon know that there is actually a, a demand and it's not just one person. <laughs> yeah, so please it. do let us know if you want this particular kit to be available. Exactly, because we can, you know, feed it back on up. Uh, so what about the EVF? Everybody's asking about the EVF. Yeah, the EVF. What more can I say about it? Um, it should be the same, as they said. Uh, we, with pre-production models, so it's difficult to say uh, it felt a bit luggy, um, but I think that will change. So because if it's the same LCD as on Z6, it should behave the same way. Exactly. So probably the same path as well. Exactly. Whereas one of my, uh, one of our colleagues, Rafi, who says that he doesn't like the EVF on the Z6, and I know that some of you have had Z6s and Z7s, and then maybe said, "Oh, I don't like it because of the, because of the EVF." He actually found it more comfortable to view on the Z5. So that's that's an interesting. You know, everybody's slightly different and what they what they're comfortable with and what they're happy to view is slightly different so um if it's the same then obviously it's not going to make any difference but on this sample it was slightly different we did notice a little difference um paul <laughs> just i'm just scrolling back through the comments here uh think the video kit for the z6 with the ninja is a better screen yeah i mean for sure if you're going to do proper videography and you need that external display and you want prores raw recorded onto an external hard drive yeah. that that's the way to do it the z6 movie kit if you are a influencer 
and influencer. Uh, if you are someone that is just Sounds like a disease, I know. Sorry. <laughs> if you, if you're someone that wants to record reviews or little bits and pieces for YouTube or Instagram, IGTV, anything like that, then the Z50 is more than enough for you. It's not you're not going to shoot feature length films on the Z50 vlogger kit, but you will quite happily be able to do your videos and you know things mainly kind of lifestyle things, yes. I would say, uh, if you're a kind of lifestyle videographer. Uh, We've seen movies shot on D90, which was the first Nikon DSLR with video. So that's right. So you can do all sorts of things with this camera. Yeah, and exactly. The video quality, image quality is there. Yeah, absolutely. Andy's asking if the 24-70 to f4 can be used as a kit lens. I mean, it doesn't come with a kit, but I mean, you can use the full gamut of, of Z lenses, no problem on that. Obviously, if you use the DX, kit lens this is the thing this is an interesting thing because when the z50 came out a lot of people said oh i might get the 16 to 50 just as a as a compact pancake lens um and obviously that gives you the dx crop automatically you can't turn it off on the z6 and z7 so the 24 to 50 kind of gives us uh in fact if you take that off if you take the 24 50 off it just just to show you the difference in size is like next to nothing so yeah. if this lens will be available separately, so if you've got a Z6 or a Z7 and you want a small travel lens, then that's probably the best way to go, rather than reducing your pixel count down to nine megapixels by sticking a DX lens on an FX body. Um, that is a lens that wasn't on the roadmap prior to now, and if you actually have a look on the Nikon, I think it's the Nikon Japan website, they've, yeah, they've updated, updated the roadmap. They've yeah. updated the roadmap. Um, Colin wants to know, he wants a long lens, when can he have one? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. The, How long is the piece of string? You no, know, yeah. it's one of those unanswerable questions. I wish so, I could say tomorrow. Yeah. 70 to 200 is due out. End of August. Yeah, indication we got September, is end of August, beginning of September, isn't something it? Something like that. Yeah. I'm going to say end of September. We might start <laughs> taking bets. End of this year. Uh, you know, certainly before the end of 2020. Yeah. I'm not going to hold my breath, but it, it will be at some point. <laughs> and then after the 70 to 200 comes out, then we're going to start to see the 100 to 300, the 200 yeah. to 600. Um, obviously, the 24 to 200, we're still waiting for stock. Yeah. But for some people, that's that's enough. That's a yeah. one lens fits all kind of solution. So um, as I say, we're still waiting yeah. for stock on no. 24 to 200s. We definitely feel your pain. On yes, this one. we do. We yeah. want longer lenses. We're we're very well covered for the shorter range. Uh, we've got the twenty, the twenty four, the thirty five, the fifty, the eighty five. We've got two twenty four to seventies, one twenty four to fifty, and the fourteen to thirty. Yeah. We've got like and then the and then the DX lenses. Yeah. And I think they've mentioned that uh, fourteen to twenty four two point eight will be out by the end of the year as well. Yes. So not a telephoto one, but another fun lens to have, I would say. Another kind of. I think with the 1424, 24 to 70, 2.8, and the 70 to 200, they will finally have completed that pro kind of holy trinity style um, of lenses, and then maybe we might end up with a with a pro body to go with it. Is that eight or is that, is that nine? <laughs> Who knows? Um, but I think the lenses first are the important thing. Um, there's also a 105 macro on the roadmap, and they changed it from 60 to 50 mil macro. Ooh. Not an S line lens either. So that's kind of interesting. They've made it slightly wider. Um, I was very curious about that. I don't quite know why they've done it that way, but there we go. A delivery. Yes. <laughs> so that is that 200 to 600 yes i know and you know what i think it is the 200 to 600 is not an s line lens so i think if you get the 24 to 200 then maybe the 200 to 600 is like completes your range if you know what yeah. i mean then you got everything that you yeah. could ever want so it's similar to 200 to 500 isn't it it's going yeah. to be kind of this type of yeah, lens exactly um and then colin says he has all of the old glass uh new long glasses needed i mean you can use all of your old lenses that's the thing if you've got AF lenses, they're manual focus. If they're AFS or AFP, they work with the FTZ, no problems. Um, before we wrap up, because we're pretty much, I think we've talked as much as we can. Is there anything else that we need to say that well, I've Becky, I just want to say in the good company, <laughs> time flies. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Time flies when you're having so much fun. <laughs> Thank you for all of your questions today. Um, if, if I've missed any of the questions, please ask them now. If you want to do a final contribution to the Marilyn Monroe fund, uh, you can. <laughs> if you want to cover my face with Marilyn Monroe. Fund, um, if you want to contribute to the coffee fund, you can do that for the last couple of minutes that we're live. Um, 
I am not sure if I've missed any questions. I didn't want to touch the computer and, um, and make something go wrong by scrolling through. For the same kind of price, you could get a reasonable D810. Yes, but it's not mirrorless. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a very different camera. Maybe one of these days I will do a, maybe we can do like a combined D780 or Z5 or Z6 thing when we start to see the Z5s come through. Or, I mean, what cameras would you guys want us to um, to compare? Because we're happy to compare. Obviously, we're not going to compare a D810 with a Z50, because that doesn't make a lot of sense. But things that are logical that maybe you, you don't quite know where the differences are or why you would go for one or the other. I can certainly um, do a live stream or we can do a pre-recorded video on that, whatever would be of interest to you. Um, it's very unusual for us to have Constantine live. So send him questions <laughs> put him on the spot do it I would just for entertainment <laughs> um I'm just trying to see if there's any other bits that I've missed uh Colin asks if you keep in yes so you can you can absolutely pop in if you if you go onto our website, you can book an appointment. It's the best way to do it, just so that you don't try and come at the same time as someone else. Because we have, obviously, quite limited space in the shop. And for various reasons and government guidelines, we have to have one customer in the shop at a time. So if you want to come in, you are more than welcome to. Um, we won't have the Z5 now, because we're sending it back to the Nikon school. Um, literally, as soon as the stream is finished, we have to give it back, which is very sad. <laughs> Um, but if you want to come and have a look at anything else, you're welcome to uh, just book an appointment on the actual website so that we know when you're coming so that we can we can be prepared and make sure that you're not coming at the same time as anyone else. Uh, so Andy's saying as there's a teleconverter, uh, you don't need a long lens. Well, the problem is that the teleconverter is kind of a stopgap for the for the longer lenses, yeah. but it only works with the 70 to 200. So we do definitely need that first. For uh, now. For now. More to come. Yeah, exactly. So once you put the converter with the 70 to 200, you've already got a longer lens and you're quite right. It will lose you a bit of light, but as I say, the MTF charts are very impressive. Um, so I don't think you're going to lose as much sharpness as you do with the, let's say, the TC14, TC17 on the current 70 to 200s, for example. Although the 1.4 Mark III is very good. Yeah. It's probably the best one of all of them. Uh, everyone's saying, nice to see you. Good oh, to see you, Constantine. You. <laughs> <laughs> Be kind to me, it's my first time. Yes, I know. Did very well. <laughs> uh, right. I think that's everything. So as I say, send us over questions. Let us know if you want to be on the uh, waiting list for the Z5 or the teleconverters. We've got waiting lists for both of those. The firmware update for the Z50 is out. Do you know when? I would say now, but... I think it's soon. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's actually <laughs> now, live. Soon. The streaming software is out in August. I will, as soon as I know, um, I will I will do a little stream or review on that because I want to <laughs> see what it's like. I want to see what it's like in comparison to doing this. Um, hide it. Philip says we should hide the Z5. <laughs> Problem is, if someone from Nikon is watching, they'll know. <laughs> but no, I promised hand on heart that I would return it, so I will. And then when we get a proper non-sample body, we'll show that. The lens isn't a sample from what I can see, but the, the Z5 actually says sample in the in the yeah, I in, don't know if it's going to be noticeable bag. on that It's green. Thing, but... it's, it's green. You'll probably be able to see it. Can you see it? Yeah, so it doesn't have a serial number, which means that it's pre-production. Um, there we go. Terry says hello and thank you. Um, David, sorry, I'm trying to see. David says thanks. <laughs> and Thank all right, I think we're going to love you and leave you. Thank you very much for joining us this Friday afternoon. We will see you next Friday. Well, I certainly will. I'll see if I can rope I don't know if they're going to let me in again. <laughs> Might not. Um, I'll certainly try and rope them in for another stream uh, one of these days. Uh, please do comment on anything that you would like us to cover on the live streams. I'm more than happy um, to take suggestions. Um, and as always, have a wonderful weekend and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. There we go.